Hello everyone, this is Rise of the Phoenix, and in this video I'm going to talk about why, in my opinion, Chiskul was wrong to place Faramir in the D tier in his recent Commander tier list video. I'll start this off by saying that this video is not meant to create any sort of feud with Chiskul. His channel and his videos are awesome, and you guys should definitely check them out if you haven't already. Also, I do agree with his assessment that at respect zero, Faramir is a below average commander. However, at respect three, Faramir becomes amazing. So we're going to look at some recent battle reports and analyze them a little bit, and then we'll go over my Faramir build and discuss why I think he is an underrated commander. So the Battle report that's on screen right now was from a couple of days ago. Faramir taking a 200 tile. He did 117 and a half thousand damage on his own, and he did almost 22,000 healing. I have a bunch of battle reports of him in here since he's one of my primary commanders for taking 200 tiles. Uh, he tends to average somewhere around 90 to 100,000 damage and 15 to 20,000 healing. So he's putting in a lot of work for me taking these nice juicy tiles. However, just because a commander can take tiles doesn't necessarily mean that they're a very good commander. So let's take a look at how he performs in PvP. This is a report from earlier today. There were four or five armies standing on Arid Lumen Keep, which my faction is trying to take. So we completely bulldoze a level 33 Aon, and Aon was named as the sole S tier commander in Chiskel's recent video. I will say that my Faramir has an 11 level advantage, which is quite massive, and I brought tier four units to this fight whereas she was running with only tier threes. However, still did a solid amount of damage and a pretty nice amount of healing. We completely slayed a level eight Faramir, doesn't even really count. Ran into a 38 Dwalin, got him in a draw. Uh, we did 88,000 damage, 22,000 healing. And Dwalin is a much more healing focused commander, but in my opinion, he didn't do all that much more healing than my Faramir. And then ultimately the draw rolled over into a victory with Faramir doing another 35k damage, another almost 6k healing. You guys can do the math on that total fight. And eventually after running through those armies, he ran into a level 36 Haldir that took us out. So those are some battle reports that I hope shows that Faramir can really hold his own, both in terms of taking tiles and in terms of slaying other players. So let's look at the build here. Uh, you definitely do not want to mess with Last Steward. There might be an interesting build you could try at the beginning of a season where you max out leader to gain extra experience from battles. And I would like to mess with it sometime because I'm wondering how quickly you could get Faramir up to a high enough level to where he could start taking 130s and 150s. Cause I think he could get there quite a bit faster than anybody else, which would give you a big advantage starting to take those higher tiles earlier than any other commander could. So my initial points went into guide because it gives an insane 45% physical damage boost to your entire army for the first two rounds. Additionally, once you max it out, your army gets stun immunity for those first two rounds to ensure that all of that damage goes through onto the enemy army. Then we picked up Armed Escort. It has a one round cooldown skill, so it goes off on even rounds, two, four, six, eight, and 10 deals a little bit of damage and gives you some healing. It's a very nice skill for taking early tiles because it helps mitigate losses and it gives your army some sustainability in longer PVP fights. As soon as I could, I put one point in Rangers of Athelion. This is a skill that goes off on round one 
and its cooldown is two rounds. So it's going to go off on round one. It'll be on cooldown rounds two and three, come back up on round four, etc. It does reasonable damage, but more importantly, it gives your entire army initiative in the next round of combat. And in my opinion, that is absolutely massive because initiative means in the next round of combat, your units are guaranteed to attack first. So your guys, they do their attacks, they do their damage, the enemy loses units, and then with a reduced army, the enemy attacks back, meaning you are taking less damage because you've already killed some of their army. Then we just pick up the associated skills with Rangers of Ithilien, flanking it has a two round cooldown, so it's on cooldown for rounds one and two, goes off round three, etc., etc. Does a pretty nice chunk of damage, and importantly, it prioritizes ranged units. This is very nice because ranged units tend to be very squishy, meaning every time Faramir uses flanking, he's going to get a lot of kills. The trade off for ranged units being squishy is that they tend to do a lot of damage. And so you're ensuring that you start to kill the enemy's ranged units quickly and you kill them a lot at a time because they're so squishy, which again greatly reduces the amount of damage that is incoming to your army. Finally, we get Rush. This is a skill that goes off on round one as a one round cooldown. So this is going to go off on all odd number rounds and it does some damage. It's just nice because it's essentially spammed. So in essence, Faramir has one, two, three, four damage skills, one of which also gives some minor healing. He gives your entire army a massive boost for the first couple of rounds of combat. And that's so important because if you can uh, gain an advantage in the early rounds of combat, you should be able to snowball that advantage in the later rounds because your army is going to be larger than their army, which means their army's damage and survivability is falling off more and more and more as the battle wears on. For the final points, I would either take him to Respect 5 and start looking at some of his Respect 5 skills uh, as Arnor in particular, Nobility, if I was going to run a full army of men, this could be a nice damage boost. Otherwise, I might just take Gallant for the extra might and extra speed. The speed helping ensure that my army goes first in round so they don't have initiative and the might is just another damage boost. However, depending on who you're fighting, Foresight can also be very good, allowing your units to ignore avoidance uh, like the elf units have. Um, Oathbreakers have in units like that, where that, annoy that avoidance can be very annoying to deal with. This skill can help balance that out. However, it's probably not something I would always have skilled if I could help it. It just might be something that I would respec into if I knew I was going to be fighting units with avoidance. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to convince you that Faramir is much more worthy of a higher ranking on the tier list than the D tier. He has been my primary commander this season on this server, and he has been putting in a massive amount of work for me. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.